and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, Mr. Randy. Uh, Chris, Sergeant Lawrence report. Did you get your breakfast then? You got your breakfast then? All right, good. You got the breakfast then. I saw people file it in, and he was in the food line. I was like, that sounds backwards. I saw the doors closed. You're good. You're good to go. Okay, so today we have Ms. Libertarian, Karen Fuller from Crescent. So, uh, just want to introduce everybody. A lot of you know Brian Dance. You've seen it, Brian. Yeah. Brian's a neighbor, good friend. We've gone on some trips together, but we can't tell you about it. We'll have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you guys. Um, we also have as a visiting Rotarian, John Redden from the Range Park. Right. 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 to people that 
didn't respond yet, but when I'm sending out to people that didn't respond, it's actually for people that have responded. So I apologize if you keep getting repeated ones, but um, everybody knows June 21st. I've heard from, I think, 50 plus people right now. So. No meeting that Thursday, but later that night. Any other announcements? Change of the guard for our district. Uh, governor is the 18th on Monday, too. That's the party, so we'd love to have some representation there. That's that Scarman. It's Monday the 18th. Huh? Uh, anybody else? All ready for some feud? Ready or not, here it comes. <laughs> All right, we got the literal family. Oh, God. And we'll do the Hassel family back there. <laughs> 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 Just don't want to <laughs> 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 Okay. Wrong, wrong, There's the question. All right, past, past, past or present. Name a TV show that was set on an island. Past or present, there's five possible answers. Gilligan's Island. Oh, sorry, we're playing. We're playing. We're playing. Number one, Gilligan's Island. Brian, what's an island here? What's a... I didn't think you'd have to think this early. Hawaii Five-O. Fantasy. Fantasy Island. Let's go with order. You're talking about Fantasy Island? That's it, yeah. Yeah. Fantasy Island? Wi-Fi <laughs> though. I'm making them easier for you guys. I got nothing. <laughs> How many answers are there? There's five answers, y'all got. Gilligan's Island, Fantasy Island, and Hawaii Five-O. Baywatch. Thank you, Paul. That's a good guess. I mean, I, I like to think of Baywatch. Walking out. Walking out. All right, one more. Long time I had to go to this island. As I'm walking back here, as I walk. One more. That's wrong. That's perfect. I didn't have the answer. Anti angle. Anti angle. Anti angle. Anti angle. Anti angle. Anti angle. And oh, yeah. Survivor. Those two answers where it goes is lost and survivor. Oh, oh, I knew I knew survivor. I didn't know lost. These are bay bucks from the uh we had extra, so y'all should put up a bunch of them. Got a beer uh, Happy dollars. Happy dollars. Uh, I was going to give him away. This is for Danny Marlene after being
I want to do this uh, for a, a very good reason. Uh, I think it's a very good reason. I've been a Rotarian for longer than a lot of you have been alive, for almost 40 years. And I've been a club president. I've been involved in a variety of club activities over the years. And I want you to know, as a club, that when I bring, for example, an incoming president to our club, over to see how I think a Rotary Club is run well <clears throat> in terms of esprit de corps and, and connectivity and, and high level of energy. You know where I bring Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, I got a couple of, I got a couple of happy dollars. I got, I got a good news and a not so good news. So uh, the first one is just something we were talking about at five of five last night. I, I told you if I'd stand up uh, in honor of Memorial Day. I don't know if anybody want to join me in uh, a dollar for for, uh, for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. <coughs> Thanks to them. How do you say no to that? I don't say no to that. That's just collecting. Yeah. And then the other one is just a thought. So this is, I had the benefit or the opportunity this year to attend, my wife and I did, had the opportunity to attend the uh, the Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby. So we had two fantastic days. Absolutely beautiful event other than the fact that it rained three inches. Um, but the pageantry, everything is definitely a bucket list item we were able to take off. And I just want you to know that I did place a bet on the sixth horse to on the number six on the number eight horse to win the race for five dollars, and we didn't win. So, <laughs> I'll take it. but I'll give you another dollar yeah, right. and, and the ticket. All right. All right. <laughs> huh? Jim Kennedy. It was a reclining. <laughs> Here's a happy dollar for, uh, for those who uh, fought for our freedom. And uh, I was in uh, London, England with, uh, with Sue last week. She had some business, and uh, I had some fun. Um, and I, uh, I had a goal of hitting as many old historic pubs as I could. And then we noticed. <laughs> yeah. And I managed to get five of them. That's not very many, and I'm getting no appreciation for worn beer. Jim Crash. All right, there's my dollar for uh, Memorial Day. Uh, last night we had our second or third, whichever it was, uh, Joint Club 505 Happy Hour. We had roughly 25 people show up, which Gate City's record at one club was back in 2007, I think, with 21 people at the Rain Valley Grill. So last night we surpassed that. It's going to be even bigger next week. Ken Kinka has invited us to come to Stormout Forest Country Club at 505. We're going to be out by the pool, weather permitting. If not, he's got a private room for us inside. Uh, Ken, the only question I've heard is, do y'all take credit cards? We do. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. So absolutely no excuse to not be there. Cash or credit card. Cash or credit card. Lisa Simpson says we get over 25 people. Tell. She'll wear her bikini. So. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 but anyway, so here we go. We had Rick Owen. By the way, Gate City, depending on how you count Deborah Friedman, she's not here today. We either had seven or eight. Summit either had nine or ten. Now come on, it's our home club deal, guys, girls. Y'all need sports and going out. And by the way, I remember Karen Pollard's name. She's that uh, memory lady. And if we get <laughs> enough, and if we get enough money, Chip will wear a speedo. <laughs> oh dear God! <laughs> 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 Um, so good news, bad news. At the start of the French Open, you know, tennis. My wife is a huge tennis fan. Loves to follow John Isner, and she saw that John Isner got married recently. And but she was more in, interested in where he got married. He got married at this little place called Palmetto Bluffs near Bluffton, South Carolina. Well, apparently it's a real high-end resort community and everything. So 
That's where we went over Memorial Day. <laughs> She's got great taste. <laughs> and here you. If I could, yeah, well, yeah. but if I could get one of those dollars back, I <laughs> Well, you know, as y'all know, Graham's happy. He has always had a really great business, business wisdom. And he always told me, he said, execution is not just the ability to implement a plan. It's also a pretty good solution for those that don't have that ability. Well, President Ralph, uh, President Ralph, yes, and, you know, Ralph is interested in retiring for presidency of Rotary, and perhaps uh, this is not going to go over well, and I don't want to surprise you with it now, it's my head uh, but you're going to find out sooner or later. It's big. We do not have a retirement plan to get City Rotary. <laughs> but, that would have done it but a number of you do have retirement plans at your uh, place of employment or for your company. And our speaker today will be talking about retirement plans and companies' fiduciary responsibilities and facts for companies and individuals and things to know about uh, as it pertains to those plans. Susan Beard is our presenter today. She has uh, 32 years of professional experience, worked for Bank of America Trust, Wells Fargo, and in Wachovia for years. She is a uh, financial, does uh, retirement plans and works with individuals and families and wealth and planning strategy. She works with companies and their law firms for working on the retirement plans as well. She is active in the community, is uh, involved with the uh, Greensboro chapter of the Society for Financial uh, Planning Specialists in the Greensboro of, uh, uh, blanking on it. Yeah, that's a help. It's a society. I, it, I know because I came, who is not coming prepared cluster? The uh, Greensboro State Planning Council and has served as a financial advisor for Habitat and for Humanity. Susan, thank you for coming and sharing with us today. Thank you. Good morning. I feel like my, my subject matter is very dry. I, I didn't realize all the, the great sense of humor and personalities here this morning. Um, we can be really dry. <laughs> And I like the family feud that gets things going and kind of got kind of does. <laughs> um, so thank again, thanks for having me this morning. I appreciate um, Kelly. I, I reached out to Kelly because I, I wanted to speak to Kelly this morning, and um, Chip and I um, shared emails back and forth to make it happen. So <coughs> thank you both. Um, I, I know Kelly very well, and I know how much you know community service that he he does. And so I, I, mean, I want to say as, as a citizen of Greensboro, I appreciate what you as a Rotary do. Um, I mean, community service is just it's so, so important. So, I appreciate it. Um, join us. Well, I want to ask this morning, how many of you are business owners? Okay, so several business owners. So this is, this is very, um, you know, appropriate, I think. Um, because the subject matter, it does relate to business owners as well as um, participants in a um, company retirement plan. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit in the beginning about your fiduciary responsibilities as a company um, business owner or an HR director of a company. And then talk a little bit about some critical facts that are just, that are just good to know. You may or may not be aware of, but um, I would say, you know, Probably 99 or 100 percent of you have a retirement plan. It's probably 100 percent. So, um, and some of this can relate to to your individual IRA as well. well let me go back here. So, um, a little bit about fiduciary responsibilities. The law defines the actions that result in fiduciary duties and the extent of those duties. So, for example. Um, Establishing a plan, that's a business decision. But taking the steps and documenting the process to do that is a fiduciary decision. So that's an example. Um, hiring someone to manage the plan. So as a business owner, you know, you're going to hire, and some of you may or may not be familiar with some of these terms, but a third party administrator, a record keeper, and an investment advisory firm. It may be bundled. It may be one firm that's, that's you know, 
doing all those activities for you, but what's important is what your process in implementing the, the plan or getting these outside partners to implement the plan for you. So documenting that selection process, for example, you know, what's this company's, let's say it's an investment advisory firm, you know, what's that company's experience? Um, <coughs> what are the professionals that would be working with you? What, what is their experience? How many plans do they manage? You know, so, so knowing who you're going to be working with and documenting that process is important. So some of this I think is pretty um, basic. I mean, a fiduciary has to act solely in the interest <coughs> of participants. Um, following the plan documents, every 401k plan or 403b plan, basically a company retirement plan has a document they go by. If you're matching, you know, 2% up to 2%, then you better be matching 2% if that's what your document said. So it's following plan documents. Um, diversifying plan investments. Um, so what's, what that is talking about is for your company retirement plan to be sure that the plan options, with all the plan options, that a participant can look at those plan options and create a diversified allocation for himself or herself. That's what that means. And you're probably familiar with, you know, asset allocation, small cap, large cap, emerging markets. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to have 10 options of funds under each of those <coughs> allocations. What it means, excuse me, is to be able to create a diversified portfolio <coughs> for that individual. Um, paying only reasonable plan expenses. So we'll talk a little bit about that. What is reasonable? Well, the government doesn't really define reasonable, so, so how do you measure that? And having a prudent process, again, you know, documenting your selection process. Um, so again, what's important when working with an investment advisor? <coughs> Sufficient diversification, we talked a little bit about that. Um, analysis tools, what does the investment advisory firm use to analyze the funds to create the portfolio for your 401k plan. Um, do they use Bloomberg? Do they use Morningstar? You know, a lot of firms use the same type of tools or similar tools, but what are they and how do they use them? Um, Bloomberg, for instance, what, what's amazing about Bloomberg, um, you probably realize Michael Bloomberg created Bloomberg, um, but what's amazing is it, it can get down to, if, if you're studying a pharmaceutical company, how many prescriptions for a particular <coughs> drug are written in a year. I mean, it's, it's just incredible, the details. So, so it's important to understand, you know, what's within those funds, you know, asking those questions. Are no-load funds um, or no-load options offered? Probably familiar with, you know, mutual funds, you have, you know, no load mutual funds, institutional share classes are usually the least expensive. And when you pay, you know, less expensive costs, obviously that helps your performance because it's not taken away from your performance field. <coughs> um, let's see, fund monitoring. So the investment firm, you've, you've learned how they choose those funds, how they create the portfolio, but how do they monitor those funds? How often are they meeting with you, the company owner, to review that fund list? Um, and if they want to replace a fund, why? Why not? Um, use of proprietary funds. So um, the question <coughs> is, if so, why? So if you have a company retirement plan and there's one or more proprietary funds in there, you know, ask the question, why? Um, Usually they're more expensive, and what's difficult is if you want to have your um, plan analyzed by someone else, it's hard for that you know other person to to dig deep and and to find out what's within that fund. So um, I think transparency and objectivity are the most important items here. So mutual fund classes, I've, I've um, touched on that. Um, what's the money market fund or cash equivalent yield? Is it an insurance-based asset? 
So um, sometimes if you work with certain um, institutions on your 401k plan, they may or may not use a um, insurance-based asset. And if so, a lot of times the yield, the yield is higher, but the expense can also be higher too. The other part on that is if you're thinking about changing your plan to someone else and the participants don't get out of that particular asset, um, they may be locked in for up to 270 days. So it's just important to know, you know, are there any reasons for there to be any liquidity issues if you decided to change your plan to someone else? Um, fund av availability. Um, when you're working with investment advisors who, you know, let's say um, you have an unbundled plan, so you're working with an investment advisor and your TPA and your record keeper, they're all separate. Um, what's important here is does that record keeper, do they have total open architecture, meaning you can use whatever funds, you know, that the investment advisor may want to use in the plan. Sometimes they, they will have, have some limited architecture, but it may not really make a difference as long as that investment advisor feels that they can create a valuable portfolio for you. But it's really just, you know, just knowing. Um, target date funds, you may be familiar with target date funds. Um, they haven't been around a real long time, but um, I think it's important to have those, especially with some larger plans, at least have that availability. Because if you have some participants that are not making options in their plan, target date fund is based on their birthday, and so then, then naturally when they are expected to retire, so it becomes more conservative as they retire. So if you have participants that aren't actively managing their account, then that's it's a nice option to have that. Um, I doubt that anyone in here is is not managing their plan. But um, but again, I think it's I think it's a great option. So 12B1 fees, those are marketing fees for um, for mutual funds. And in the 70s, that it was very popular because mutual funds weren't nearly as large. Well, now they're huge. So are they really necessary? Um, is kind of the question. So if you have whether it's your individual IRA or whether you have a retirement plan. You know, are some of those funds um, using 12B1 fees? And if so, just ask you know ask the question why. If they are, usually they're they're credited 100% back to the participants that are invested in those mutual funds. But again, you know, there are so many options of mutual funds without 12B1 fees that so you might want to just ask that question. Um, what is the risk versus reward on available funds? Well. Um, I had one person ask, well, all these funds, I'm, you know, I'm paying over 1%, I'm okay with that because they're in the top quartile with Morningstar. Well, there are a lot of funds that are in the top quartile. There are a lot of funds that are in the second, third, and fourth quartile too. But look at, don't just look at performance, look at the risk that it takes to get to that performance. And, you know, that's what's important, whether it's your IRA or whether it's an individual investment account or your 401k plan. Um, it's important to know what risk you're taking to get to that performance. Um, and then forms of measurement for performance and other factors. Um, you know, again, that's, you know, that can be, um, I mean, really, yeah, I think Morningstar is an excellent, is an excellent measurement, but you want to understand when you're talking to your investment advisor, how are they, how are they, what are they measuring this performance against? Um, we were using an emerging, well, we were gonna use an emerging market fund, for instance, in a plan, but then looking deeper into it, it really had much more exposure to international, so we decided not to use that. Well, maybe international was doing well, and so the performance was better. So you have to, you know, look under the hood and know what you're, know what you're doing. Um, see the empty conference room there, that's when, you know, you have a participant meeting and no one shows up. <laughs> um, it's, you know, educational meetings are obviously are extremely important. If you're a business owner, you know, it's, it's so important for the employees to understand um, the benefit that you're providing to them. And you may even, even if you're not doing matching, the fact that you're 
you're doing your due diligence and you're creating this, you know, this nice benefit for the employees, it's, it's huge. So it's important to, you know, to work with people that, you know, partners that encourage, encourage participation and help you encourage your um, employees to participate in the plan. Um, you know, so we talked a little bit about, you know, fee structure. Know, know what the fee structure is. There are some um, third-party administrators and record keepers that share revenue. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you, but you should know that, and you should know how they share revenue. Sometimes that actually can, can save you money as a, as a business owner. Um, as an investment advisor, um, I want to know that, and, and we're totally objective. So, like, we don't, we, don't share any rev we don't share any revenue. We don't have any affiliations. So you may be working with a company that does have affiliations, and, again, you just need to understand are they sharing revenue? How are they affiliated with each other? Um, that's important. Um, and then, you know, small, I mean, it's not a small thing, but I guess basic things like the website, you know, to be sure that it's, you know, it's user friendly, that, that if you're an employee, that you're comfortable with fund changes, you know how to, you know, you know how to work the system and you're getting great client service if you have a question. So, um, This, this slide right here just tells you a little bit about what the third party administrator does, what the record keeper does. So the TPA is the one that designs the plan documents, takes care of compliance testing, prepares the participant statements. The record keeper um, processes enrollment, but a lot of people have their investment advisor there as well. Sometimes they're there together. Um, provides access to the account statements on the website. Um, Retirement planning calculators, you know, a lot of websites have that. I think I think that's important, but now we can pretty much go to the internet and and, and do anything. And then generates the reporting for the sponsor of participants. Um, and it, I touched on bundled and unbundled. You know, unbundled, all your partners are separate. Um, so understanding compensation, understanding shared revenue. Understanding the processes of each provider, that's what's extremely important, especially with your investment advisor. Uh, <clears throat> is there flexibility on how fees are paid? Sometimes, you know, a company wants to take more of the, um, more of the fee structure on themselves. Sometimes they, want to, they don't want to pay for it and, and the participants are paying for it. But it's nice to know what the flexibility, what the options are. Um, and are your providers objective? Are they transparent and objective? Transparent and objective. That's that to me is key. Um, and so this talk about you know the Department of Labor. You've probably heard and you know keep hearing the news about you know what is a fiduciary. The Department of Labor still has not come to a determination um, about that, and so um, they're not they're not enforcing prohibited transactions. And an example of that is you know charging too much for a plan, um, but that's, that's, that's got to be coming. So again, I think um, advisory firms especially are much more cognizant of that. And, and you probably noticed as an employee too on your statements, you can now see the breakdown. And that started years ago. Um, you know, and I've had participants call me and all of a sudden they think they're paying all these fees, well, they've, they've been paying them all along, and they're the advisor fee, the record-keeping fee, administration. But I love it because they know what they're paying. I mean, that's, they should know what they're paying. And that's my pretty face. So, so that concludes my presentation, um, and I, I welcome any questions. But hopefully that was a share of some plan you didn't know. Very interesting. And just a basic question. When you're looking at... Um, maybe on the internet or, or web sites for investment companies and you see, uh, for example, a list of Vanguard funds, you see the rates of return. Is there a uniform uh, rule in the marketplace that says when you, uh, investment company, when you present your return to the consumer, that that is net of fees or not net of fees? Is there kind of some uniformity when you see a mutual fund? You have to, you know, the, the best thing I got of um, Morningstar.com is, is to me the best, one of the best places to go. Sometimes you have to actually go to the prospectus. So there's no uniformity when you see 
Which no, is true. No, you have to really, you have to dig deep. Susan, it, it is true that um, an employer cannot delegate their fiduciary responsibility, even though they Correct. engage a third party administrator or Exactly, exactly. And that's that's a very important point is and what we try to tell these, you know, I mean, business owners um, or, you know, law firm partners, you know, you, you have a fiduciary responsibility um, on all these processes. And again, you're delegating to these third party partners, but you still have a fiduciary responsibility. Um, and there's something called a 321 and 338. Three, a 338 is when you're delegating that fiduciary responsibility to an investment advisory firm. Yes, sir. Just one small correction on your slides there. The DOL is uh, enforcing the rules against prohibited transactions. And a prohibited transaction might be the president of the company says, hey, um, T. Rowe Price is our largest shareholder. I think we ought to put three T. Rowe Price funds in our plan just to be sure they don't get mad at us and leave prohibited transaction. He could go to jail. He could be responsible for having the plan disqualified. Uh, it could cost him millions of dollars personally and the company and have the plan disqualified, meaning all the money in the plan now becomes taxable. So. And it, it is coming, but, I, but I've, yeah. I've read a lot about it recently. <coughs> they just won't come to a firm. Well, the DOL rules will be suspended because uh, the court threw it out down right. in Texas. Exactly. And so it's been suspended. And Scalia's son. Exactly. Yeah. So, but, but again, and I think that's a good point too. You know, talking about the fiduciary responsibility of the company owner is really to understand what's what's in that fund. You know, what expenses are you paying, or what expenses are the participants paying? You know, are they reasonable fees? You know, all those things are extremely, extremely important, and that's why. I tell, you know, objectivity and transparency. Um, it's interesting how many people I talk to, they, they really they really don't understand what's in the plan and how the fees are calculated. And um, mutual funds a lot of times are expensive. You know, there, there are just so many, so many other options there. So you need to, it's, it's serious. Um, and again, know, know the process and, and documenting the process. Yes, sir. Like historically, there have been three legs of the stool for retirement: uh, Social Security, four hundred one k, personal <coughs> savings, and a pension. What happened to the pension? Why do you see many people? <laughs> 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 It's, it, it was, it's, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. So you see pensions going away. My, my dad worked for um, Norfolk and Western Railway. I'm from Warnock, Virginia. And, and he, he said every time he would get a letter in the mail, they were afraid they were, you know, they were going to cut, cut his pension. It's so expensive. You know, he's 85. Well, they're still paying him, you know, a guaranteed amount. So you just, you just don't see that many anymore. And that was like working for, you know, you work for the railroad, that was like working for the government. <laughs> I tell my children, you know, you, Social Security, I mean, you just don't, don't know what's going to be out there anymore, so they, they have to start thinking about it now. You know, they're 24 and 20. <laughs> yes. More of a discussion question for everybody, but one of the struggles we're having is in enrollment in our plan. We've got it we think is a good plan, but the young kids we're hiring who are making pretty decent salaries just aren't living. And they, they uh, the millennials have a different mindset than we did about putting our money in the retirement plans. So I, I don't know, is anybody else facing that? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And we, we, we've talked about uh, what's a, a sweet, so an auto enrollment and a sweet. Right. Yes. And I'm like, mm, and we, I personally struggle with that because it's their money, right? I want to make sure they know what they're signing up for and how much of it they're going to put in. But we think it's better for them, but I don't know if it's the right thing to do. So yeah, I guess we do auto enrollment because mm -hmm. with an opt out option. Okay. And our history that everybody you put in auto enrollment, they stay. No. Yeah, they did. Nobody yeah. opts out. That's the that's We did auto enroll with one of our plans, and uh, the 
it's our largest plant, it's a textile company. Mm -hmm. There's always pushback. And the HR director said no, everybody else said yes, and she was afraid that she would just be inundated. Right. Not one person has opted out. Not one out of mm -hmm. over a thousand people. So, yeah. Laziness is a so story. In fact, she actually got <laughs> some people thank her for doing auto enroll because it made them do something they knew they needed to do. So. I, Randy, I also consider not just the opting, you know, them having to opt out, but also the uh, increase, like an annual increase in percentage. That's part of it, right? And that we, when I was at Xerox, I was part of a team there, and we did that at that. I mean, you can trigger it with raises or annual performance reviews, and you can trigger it just, you know, and, and people do it, and it, it has long term improvements. Thank you. One of the things that we, we do when we give raises is we make we show the entire benefit package. So we will show an employee on paper what their contribution is because a lot of times, especially a young person, and it's so far out, but if you can put it on paper and they can see what you are matching, um, that helps. And we've also, uh, early on, when we terminated our pension plan and we incentivized our employees to participate in the annual meeting because we gave them $100 if they showed up. What day's the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> What's a pension plan? There are ways you can get your employees to, to show up. Or sometimes now we offer food, so and I think yeah, the partners that you're working with, hopefully, can encourage that and can help you with those things. But the other thing, too, is there's got to be a critical mass of, of people in your organization that are excited about whatever it is that you're doing. You know, that is a we're a little different because we're an, an ESOP, but that's one of the things that we're sort of seeing that's probably going to be really important in the next you know, couple of years is a critical mass of people who understand what it's all about and understand its long-term impacts and are sort of excited about sharing that with others.